In this module, we will learn to create a schematic symbol library, which consists of multiple symbols, parameters, and footprint associations. A symbol can be created manually from the ground up or automatically using a wizard. Symbols can also be copied from another schematic symbol library or from a schematic document. We will take a look at each of these methods. To start, we want to have a fresh environment. Be sure to close any open documents or projects that you may have, saving any necessary files. All library files can be created from the File, New, Library menu. We will choose to create a new schematic library. While on this editor, the schematic library on the left shows the list of components in the library. Associations to models, including footprints and simulation models, are done in the bottom pane. Before we start creating or editing a symbol, we should prepare the workspace where we set the appropriate grids and units. Open Tools, Document Options, and this will open a Properties panel. In here, we will ensure to be on Imperial Mills, our Snap Grid enabled, and set to 100 mils. Recall that we can hit the G key to toggle through the grids predefined in our preferences. It is important to note that most all tube components are defined on an imperial symbol. Thus, it is recommended for new custom symbols to also be created on this system to ease connectivity from all tube libraries and the new components. Please note the imperial grids can be used on metric size sheets since sheet size and units are independent in all tube designer. After setting up the workspace, we will define the symbol's properties. By default, we should have a blank component created in this new library called component underscore one. Double click on it to open its properties. In here, we can change its name or design item ID to something more meaningful, such as cap 200 nanofarad. We will then define a default designator to be C question mark. The comment and description fields can also be filled out for completeness. Generally, symbols should also have parameter information, such as value, internal part number, and manufacturer data. We can add these parameters within the parameters tab in the properties panel. Let's add a parameter of internal part number and a value of test1234 for this symbol. We will talk about supplier and manufacturer parameters later in this module. Next, we will capture the graphic representation of this symbol. We will be drawing the symbol close to the sheet origin for easier placement in the schematics. We can utilize the graphical design objects found in the place menu or the active bar for this. In our case, since we are creating a capacitor, we will just use the line objects. Graphical objects, such as lines, have no electrical properties. Next, we will add pins, which will define the component's electrical properties and connection points. We can place these pins from either the Place menu or the Active Bar. Like in other editors, we can hit the Tab key prior to placement to open its properties. Here, we can define the pin designator and its visibility. Please note that pins in the symbol are mapped to pads in the corresponding footprint through designators by default. Please ensure that pins in the symbol have the exact same designator as its corresponding pad in the footprint. Defining the right electrical type will ensure that improper connections, such as output to output pins in the schematic, will be flagged as an error. To facilitate accurate length calculation in the PCB document, internal pin to package or die length can be defined as well. Pin length and other graphical pin properties can be modified down below. When placing the pin, the X crosshair shows its connection point. Thus, we will ensure that the pins are placed so that the X crosshairs are on the outside of the symbol graphics. Now that our symbol graphics are essentially done, let's discuss supplier data. Supplier data can be accessed through the Manufacturer Part Search panel. Within this panel, let's search for capacitor 220 nanofarad 0805 fiche as we would like to use this manufacturer. We can filter this list to only show parts from preferred suppliers by clicking on the gear icon and then parts provider's preferences to enter our preferences. In here, we can choose to enable or disable from over 80 suppliers worldwide. We will just enable DigiKey and Mauser for this module and then only enable USD as the currency. 
Once we've configured that, let's perform a search again. Notice that this time around, the list will only be limited to DigiKey and Mauser. As we select the part, its parametric information, which is fetched from provided databases, will be listed and available. Its datasheet, pricing, and stock information will also be listed. We can add this as a supplier link to our symbol by selecting supplier, right clicking on the supplier, and choosing add supplier link. However, this method will limit us to only having one supplier listed with the components in the project active on. A better method is to simply add the supplier parameters, such as supplier and supplier part number. Let's select the two parameters and right click on them, followed by add parameters too. Let's now check the component's properties. Under parameters, we can now see that the two parameters have been added. Recall that using the active bomb, it will then source for solutions and its corresponding suppliers based on these supplier parameters. Up to this point, we have seen the first method to create a symbol, which is from the ground up. We can also make use of the symbol wizard to create a symbol. This can be accessed from the tools menu. Within this wizard, we can define the number of pins for the symbol and its layout style. As we do that, its preview will be shown on the right hand side. In this table, we can modify its pin properties prior to placement. For components which we may already have this pin out information on a spreadsheet, we can copy the information from the spreadsheet and perform a smart paste onto this table. Within this smart paste window, we can then define its column and parameter mapping. Once the pins have been configured correctly, click Place and place the new symbol. Similarly, we can also modify its name, designator, and parameters through the Properties panel. Symbols can also be copied from schematic documents. Let's perform a file and then open. We're going to open the LCD schematic document from the Spirit Level project. If you would like to copy the LCD symbol to our library, we can select it and right click and then choose copy. Next, we will return to the schematic library and right click on the components list in the schematic library panel, followed by a paste. The symbol will now exist as a copy in our library, along with its properties. Copy and paste can also be carried between schematic libraries. Note that if a schematic library is to be created from an existing project, the command design make schematic library can be executed from the schematic document. This command will perform a batch copy and paste of every symbol within the project into a new schematic library, which can then be saved. Let's now save this newly created library. Using File Save As, let's save the library to our desktop in order to prepare the library for use within our designs. Once it is saved, we will close all documents and projects once again to start with a fresh environment. Now we will return to basics, which includes installing the library and creating a project. Opening the components panel, click on the button with the three bars. Choose File Based Library Preferences. Then under the Install tab, we will click on Install and browse for the newly created schematic library. We will then set it as the active library in the Components panel. Previews of the newly created symbols will now be shown in the panel to preview the part prior to placement. Let's try placing these components in a schematic. We will create a new schematic, remembering that schematics are usually contained within a project. We can then drag the component from the panel, or we can place it by right-clicking the component and choosing Place to place multiple instances of the selected component. This concludes Module 29. In this module, we saw how to create a schematic symbol library using various methods, including from the ground up, the symbol wizard, and copying existing component. In the next module, we will create a PCB footprint library. Then, we will associate our existing symbols with the corresponding footprints to make up a unified component. Please start exercise schematic symbol creation.